Let's use the normal equation to find a least squared solution to an inconsistent system. Uh, so here's a system that I just kind of randomly made up. Uh, a randomly made up system is almost guaranteed, if it has more rows than columns, it's almost guaranteed to be inconsistent. But just to get a geometric uh, sense for why this is inconsistent, let's actually, um, let's actually draw a picture of what this system is, is trying to get at. So uh, remember, a system is inconsistent when our right-hand side, so we'll call this matrix A and that vector B, uh, a system is inconsistent when the vector on the right B is not in the image of the matrix. right? And the image is the same thing as the column space. So to draw a picture of why this is inconsistent, we just need to uh, draw a picture of the column space and observe that this vector is not in that subspace that is a column space. Well, um, since we have two columns, two column vectors in R3, uh, the column space will be the subspace spanned by two vectors in R3. That's going to be a plane. So um, here are the two vectors. So GeoGebra has decided to call them U and V. Those are the um, columns of A, and then this third vector, which Diodora has decided to call W, is B. Okay, so we just need to observe that B is not in, or this third vector, is not in the uh, subspace spanned by U and V, not in the plane spanned by those two vectors. Well, it it's, seems true, but it's a little easier to see if we actually draw that plane. So here's that plane. Okay, clearly our target vector b is not in the plane spanned by the first two vectors. So that means that b is not in the column space of a, so this system is definitely inconsistent. There are no solutions to this system. So the best we can do is find a least squared solution. So we'll just solve the normal equation. Remember, the associated normal equation is a transpose a times x equals a transpose b. All right, so we have some matrix multiplication to do. A transpose is 2, 1, minus 1, 1, 2, 1. And then A itself is uh, 2, 1, 1, 2, minus 1, 1. So that times x equals A transpose 2, 1, minus 1, 1, 2, 1, times uh, B, which is 4, minus 2, 1. OK, so now we can do some matrix multiplication. So let's see, 4, 5, 6, and then 2, another 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3, and then using the second column, 2 and 2 is 4, uh, minus 1 is 3, and then 1, 2, and 1, that's 6 again. Okay. Uh, so AA transpose is a symmetric matrix, so you know this product is going to come out symmetric. The fact that the entries on the diagonal came out to be the same is actually a coincidence. So that times x equals, and now we need to do this product over here. So let's see, 8 minus 2 minus 1, that's 5, and then 4 minus 4 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Okay, now notice that this normal equation has uh, this matrix is 2 by 2. When we have a 2 by 2 matrix, it's almost uh, always of full rank. Uh, and in fact, uh, even if this symmetric matrix isn't of full rank, this vector over here is in the image of that one. So now to solve this equation, all we need to do is, well, do the usual thing of solving a linear equation. It's just that we're going into it ahead of time knowing that this system will be consistent. So there will be a, at least one vector x, possibly more than one, but at least one vector x that is a solution to this system. Uh, rather than solving it by hand, let's just ask Sage to do the heavy lifting. So let's see, the, our augmented matrix is going to be 6, 3, 5, and then the second row is 3, 6, 1. Okay. All right, so x turns out to be the vector 11 sevenths. 
11 sevenths, there we go, and minus 13 over 21. Okay, uh, so that uh, this vector is the least squared solution to this system of equations. Now remember, it's not a solution to this system because this system is inconsistent, but it is as close as we can get to a solution for this system of equations. One thing that's nice to see is remember that um, ax should be, first of all, it's in the image of a, it's the closest of any vector in the image of a to uh, the vector b. So if we actually compute a times x and plot it, we should see that it is the closest thing in that plane to the vector b. So let's calculate a x. So a is uh, 2, 1, minus 1, 1, 2, 1 x is 11 over 7 and minus 13 over 21. <laughs> okay, so let's see. We're going to get 22 over 7 plus 11 over 7. So, th uh, sorry, 22 over 7. I'd better write it out. 22 over 7 minus 13 over 21. Uh, So this is 66 over 21, so 50, 53 over 21. Okay, uh, on the second one we have 11 over 7 minus 26 over 21. So 11 over 7 is 33 over 21. Uh, minus 26 over 21, so 7 over 21. I'm going to make no effort to reduce these fractions because I don't want to. <laughs> uh, 11 over, so minus 11 over 7, uh, minus 13 over 21, so 33 plus 13. It's 46, so 40, negative 46 over 21. Okay, so this is the vector in the image of A that should be closest to B. So let's plot that to see if it's true. So let me move this window so that I can see over here. Okay, so 53 over 21, 7 over 21, and negative 46 over 21. Okay. So, oh, while well, we're, yes, so that's this vector here, right? And if you, if we look at it at the right angle, so here, you can see that this vector down here is the closest one to that vector up there, the closest one in this blue plane. right? If you picture the line going from the head of one of these vectors to the other, that is perpendicular to this plane. right? So, um, so I guess that means this all worked. <laughs>